Hey Techno Studs, let's do a little demo about command line tools on Windows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna briefly go over several of the command line tools that you can use for troubleshooting purposes. This is number one, not an exhaustive list of everything that you could use for troubleshooting. It's gonna be just a condensed list of those common command line tools that you would use. And then number two, I'm also not gonna go real in depth into any one of these because I've either covered some of these in videos in the past, or we'll cover some of these in the videos in the future. So I just wanted to list out some of the commands real quickly on what you could use for troubleshooting purposes and generally what you would use, uh, how you'd use them for troubleshooting. The first command that I'm gonna show you that you are probably familiar with is ping. So what I do is type in ping and the address that I'm pinging, and let's do something external. So this is a, often used as a DNS server, so we can ping it, and we can see that uh, everything has come back with around a 15, 16, 17 millisecond delay. So I can see the delay that's in here. So things that I look for when I do ping is I look for a return and how fast it gets returned. So if there's some sort of connectivity issue, then we'll either see that it will sh uh, show us that the destination is unreachable, or it will show us that there's a delay in some of these messages. So that's ping. The next one I'm gonna cover is ipconfig. So I you often will use this to see if my DNS is working correctly. So when I type in ipconfig, I can see the DNS entries of my different networks. And I see right here, one has an APIPA address, so this ethernet interface is not getting a connection. So uh, I see that the Wi-Fi is here, but not the ethernet. So perhaps there's something down on that network and it's not getting the proper IP address. So also what I can do for additional troubleshooting purposes is type in ipconfig all slash all. And so I would do the slash all to see things like if I want to see the DNS server or the MAC address. So I can gather a lot of information that can help me with this troubleshooting process. There are times I find that I have connectivity and I can ping IP addresses, but often I don't, I'm not able to ping maybe such as uh, a website. And if I can ping a resource in the outside world, but not a specific website or any websites, perhaps DNS is the issue. And one thing I can use to troubleshoot uh, DNS issue is by using NS lookup and then the site I want to look up. And then it will tell me what server it's using to using to look this up, and it's going to show me that this, in fact, is resolving. So, from a DNS standpoint, this server is, or this machine is connected and able to get uh, a DNS queries and be able to translate from those DNS names to uh, IP addresses. Another one we haven't covered yet, but we will in the future, is trace route. So, trace route or on Windows machine that's actually trace RT. What we can do is we can find the how to get to certain destinations and if there is something along the way that's stopping us from getting there. So for instance, I'm gonna type in uh, trace RT www.google.com and I'm going to get it and what's happening is it's going out and it's trying to reach the destination but it's limiting the time the, the number of hops that it can go and then it gets a reply back. We are going to explain that in a future video but what essentially is happening right here is you're seeing that it's coming back with each one of the hops the IP address or the name of each one of the hops along the way and so we'll be able to essentially map out what is between this machine right here and the final destination where it's going, which is www.google.com. And then it's giving the average return response rate. So we can see that the delay is really in this first top right here is where the delay comes in, into play. And then the rest of the way pretty much doesn't have much of a delay at all. And so this is how I'm able to see the whole route between one device and the end, uh, the end, which is www.google.com. All right, now that we see that's finished up, we see that there are 17 layer three devices between here and the end. And uh, once again, we'll explain a little more in a future video about this.
Another one that we've used in a prior video is the ARP-A, and this will give you a list of what's inside the ARP table. So remember the ARP table is gonna translate from IP address to MAC address. So uh, these are the active connections or have recently been connected to and showing you some of the stats of those. So yeah, so this is the, um, the ARP uh, table right here, where essentially we're viewing the ARP table. Another one that you may want to look at is the netstat. So we type in netstat, and what this is going to show us is all of the connections that it's making to the outside world. So we see that here are the TCP connections, and it's showing you the local address and port and the destination address and port that it's going to and uh, what state those are in. So established means that it's open. Close wait is just waiting for it to close. And so I've just got a few connections to this machine at this point. Now, I know we've taken a look at the routing table on a Windows machine in one of my prior videos, but uh, what we can do is we just type in route print to actually see what the different routes are. So this is similar to a routing table that you find on a router, uh, but this is on the PC machine, so it can figure out how it routes certain information. And there's a couple connections on this machine right here. So we see one is that ethernet interface that has that APIPA address on it, and it's just a local connection. So we see the network address right here and how to get to that network. We see the uh, machine address on here. And then we also see the uh, broadcast address for this network. And then we also see one for the wireless connection. So it's the same thing. We see the network, we see the machine itself, and we see the broadcast. And then it also has some broadcast addresses in here, uh, some of the loopback, local link addresses, and then the the default gateway. This is pointing to the default gateway on this machine. So, so there we see some of the connections that have been entered into this routing table. And the last one we're gonna take a look at is host name. So I type in host name and what it does is it just presents the host name of this laptop, which is demo laptop. One other thing that I'll mention is that Telnet also can be used for troubleshooting purposes, but it's not automatically installed on a Windows machine. So if you go into the Add Remove Programs, and we can click on Programs and Features, and we're gonna click on Turn Window Feature On or Off, and we scroll through here, and here's a lot of different tools that we could use to possibly help us with troubleshooting. So what I can do is I can then go to Telnet, click on Telnet and click OK, and then it'll go through the process of installing Telnet on this machine so I can Telnet into, uh, into another device and test out connectivity to another device. So that's how you turn it on, and then for me to use it, then I come back to the command line and type in Telnet, and then the address that I'm Telnetting into to test the connectivity via Telnet. So there you have it. There are the, some of the different commands. It was just a real short list and a brief explanation of each. Like I say, we've covered some of them in the past and we will be covering some more in the future. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, could you hit that like button?